All right, so welcome to another video. So today's video, I'm gonna be starting the process of updating the infotainment and instrument cluster, my 2016 Ford Explorer. So 2016 was kind of an oddball year. Still had Sync 2 for entertainment, which is garbage. So in another video, I'll be updating this to Sync 3. And I'm not crazy about the instrument cluster in this vehicle this is came on the XLTs the sport model um, multiple trim levels uh, base model and the police interceptor and all that obviously had a different instrument cluster and a, the base model XLTs or lower trim level XLTs obviously had a different instrument cluster they had separate gauges I actually like that better but there are some advancements to the higher trim level instrument cluster so that brings us to the topic of today's video, the Platinum Instrument Cluster. Ooh. So these only were available in the Explorer Platinum model, 2016 through 19. They did come in three different firmwares. So if you buy one from a donor vehicle to 2016, you're going to get one version, 2017, a slightly more enhanced version. Like instead of having a digital speedometer in here, you can have it in the middle. And then 2018, which is a third firm level, which just made a few small adjustments to the 17. The main notice, big thing you're gonna notice is that the pointers are a little bit smaller. So the one I got is out of a 2017. One assumption I'm going to make here is that if you are doing this, you know how to use Forescan and you know the OBD2 adapter. I'm not going to walk you through every little step on that. I'm just going to tell you the basics. So the first thing you need to do is, before you touch anything, connect with Forescan with your un unlimited extended license, and we're going to read our modules, and I'm going to make backups of everything. Mainly, the focus of this video, our IPC module, which is our instrument panel cluster. We're going to need that factory as-built data to flash into our new cluster. If you just plug it in as is, it will not work. One other thing to note, obviously we care about our mileage. So, we cannot roll back mileage on one of these instrument clusters. We can, however, roll mileage forward. So with that being said, write down your mileage when you buy the instrument cluster. And if you get lucky, you can find one that's about the same, maybe you get a little bit more mileage, wait for your car to hit that. But with Forescan, we can roll the mileage forward on this vehicle. So we're going to write down our mileage. You want to make sure the donor one you buy has less miles than your car currently has, and then we can roll the mileage forward. All right, a couple other things to note. The swap does just plug in. It does just work. If you just plug it in and don't do any programming, You'll have a bunch of errors for all the things that your car doesn't have. Also, the bezel that goes around here is a completely different part. So you need to buy this whole plastic piece right here. Obviously the lens usually comes on the instrument cluster. This one has a scratch on it, so I'll be replacing it. But I'll have part numbers for the bezel, the lens, you know. Really all you need, if you, as long as your lens is in good shape, you need the instrument cluster with the lens, and then you need to buy this piece right here. As of right now, online it's about 100 bucks from Ford dealer, best price I could find. You can get it from the same junkyard to get instrument cluster, even better. All right, so what does this gain? Well, it doesn't gain a whole lot, except it looks really cool. I do like the three basic screens, so it's got you know, like a large LCD here, an LCD here. Your, the only thing that is digital is your, or analog I should say, is kind of the pointer and it's actually not analog. It's just got analog numbers on the screen. Everything is digital. So it was kind of advanced for the time versus this one and the other models that have a completely analog speedometer and tachometer in some cases. Now the buttons are the same on mine, so this will just work. Obviously, if you have a lower, like a base model, you know, and, and your volume is here and here, 
um, and not down here, that could be an issue. So might have to do some more work with that. I'm not exactly sure if you just have to reprogram the steering column control module, change the buttons out. That's what I would imagine. In my case, don't need to mess with that. Just gonna be a simple swap. So to get this apart, we'll take like a trim removal tool. You basically wanna pull kind of straight back on this piece here. And then we're gonna have, it's basically connected to um, via a piece of like this fabric to the top part of the steering wheel here. So you're gonna work out those two top clips and there's a couple clips down at the bottom we wanna work out. And then there's a wiring harness back here. We're gonna reach back and disconnect this for your HVAC stuff. Watch if that pops up. And then this whole thing comes out as one unit. So once we're in here, we've got one, two, three, four, seven millimeter bolts that need to come out. So two at the top, one on each side. When you're taking them out, don't let them fall down here because they will go to another country and never get them back. out of here. There's the harness on the back to push the tab and we have freed our old instrument cluster out of the way. So this one is just a simple plugging her in. place and putting the screws back in so when you plug it in some things come to life press the key once here go into accessory mode so I'll show you it does work but you're gonna have blind spot system fault cross traffic system fault front camera malfunction blah 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 so it's giving you all these errors because my car doesn't have the features that this thing's programmed for so that's where some programming comes in now. Foreskin. Now we got the new unit on. We have a bunch of errors for systems that we do not have that this is programmed for, which is why we need to do some programming. It's important when you load Foreskin that you do not use the profile that you already created. So we're going to click, would you like to use a selected profile? No. And we're going to let this build a new profile with our new instrument panel. If you go ahead and hit yes, it's going to give you an error when you try to write the as-built data into the new cluster. So this is gonna take a minute, we're gonna let it go through, it's gonna have a bunch of DTCs, and just let it do its thing here. So obviously, it's good we've made backups of everything in case we screw anything up. So it's not as simple on some of the other models of Ford where you can just write um, your as-built data from your other module onto this one. So I'm gonna actually go to IPC, click module configuration, and we're gonna have to go through here and find the things that are wrong that we need to turn off. So let's see. So it's not a bad idea to um, look at this screen and make some screenshots of it from your old module. That way you know what you need to go through one by one. So for example, rain sensor, this one doesn't have one. So I'm going to click disabled. Uh, power liftgate control disabled. So we're basically looking for all. So the main thing would be like your cross traffic, you know, just all the features that your car has that the, maybe the plat or doesn't have that maybe the platinum cluster. Is programmed. So here's one lane departure warning disabled. I don't have that. Lane assist disabled. You need to make sure your fuel tank size is the same and all that. 
dashboard, collision warning, none. So the reason we cannot just flash our as-built data from our old cluster into this one like you would if you're upgrading uh, like a lower trim cluster is because of the fuel gauge. So I was able to just flash the as-built data from my old instrument cluster to the new one, but my fuel gauge always read full, which I knew was not correct. So the way around it was just to go in here and tick off the things that were causing my malfunctions and go about it like that because the fuel gauge is reading correctly with this in its stock form just plugged in. All right, so this was a little tricky, but I figured it out. So the only problem I had after I manually went in, so I started with the base on the platinum cluster. I went in and I turned off all the features that weren't working on here. And then I had one thing that would not work and that was the tachometer just did not work. So I finally figured it out. Um, I was looking for any kind of reference to tax signal and there's not, I started looking for spreadsheets online. I didn't find anything. There's nothing in Explorer that helps. So uh, I always go to the F-150 spreadsheet because they put the most work into this stuff. The only thing I found is on line 720-0702, tax signal. So basically that's, you know, probably number of cylinders. And it's this second line in the last thing there. So basically, I had, there was a 8 instead of a 0 right there. And what I did is, I'll show you. basically it said 0848. And I just changed it from an 8 to a 0. And then hit right. And then now... I have working tachometer. So everything else seems to be good. Obviously my hood's up right now because I've got a battery charger on. But everything else seems to be good. Which is good. So fuel gauge is correct. And I probably could have figured it out. I probably could have wrote the as-built data from the factory, you know, the original cluster, and then worked at it the other direction, try to figure out what the difference in the fuel gauge is. Um, but it just seemed easier. You know, I just picked something and started working on it and went for the, uh, the tachometer instead. If you have that issue now, if you're swapping this tach, from you know the platinum into just a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated engine you're probably not going to even have this issue but this is a four cylinder turbo engine so it's completely different setup different number of cylinders so i think that was my issue and so if you have that that's the solution that was kind of complicated but basically i'm just comparing the two as built files from where I'm at here and where I'm at there and you know using you know this lines of code as some kind of clue on where to really focus sounds nerdy kind of is but that's what I love about Ford no other car can you just add whatever features you want and make it work it's pretty cool